Welcome to Greenhorn Linux. Linux for Greenhorns. On this episode of Greenhorn Linux, we learn what the file systems are all about. We have EXT4, NTFS, FAT32, and a whole bunch of others. Ooh, this sounds super exciting already. This discussion will probably be boring, but I think it's very important that we understand file systems so that way you can make a better choice on how you want to store your data and your information. Now, this does go hand in hand with partitioning, which will be next week's episode. Uh, but I did want to break this up because this is a tremendous amount of information. So this will just basically give you the uh, starting knowledge of, uh, of how you may want to start storing your data. So the first question that probably comes up is what exactly is a file system? So in this case, a file system is going to be how your data or information is stored on your hard drive. Now, each file system has its pros and cons, which of course we will go over. But you can kind of think of it as, uh, I like to use the analogy of a bookstore. I know bookstores are probably a dying breed, but just bear with me. So let's say you're tasked with starting up a bookstore. How are you going to store all these books? Are you going to do it by author? Are you going to do it by genre? How are you going to store these massive amount of books? After you figure out how you're going to store these books, you also need to figure out how you're going to access these books very, very quickly. So uh, you may use a card catalog system. Perhaps you would use a scanner type system. And each system would have pros and cons on how quickly you could access these books. So this is kind of how a file system is set up. Each file system will have pros and cons. And it'll be uh, how you either store that information and how quickly you can access that information along with a whole host of other bonuses that each file system uh, may have. By and large these are the default file systems. So Windows, or at least Windows, we'll say Vista and 7, default to the NTFS file system. So that's how the operating system stores all of its data in an NTFS partition. Linux, for the most part, uses ext4. Uh, we'll get into this more later, but it can use a whole host of different file systems. But generally speaking, I'm just going to say the default is ext4 for this video. And lastly, we have uh, the Mac operating system, which I'm not too familiar with, but uh, that I believe uses HSF plus, if I'm not mistaken. So you're probably wondering why in the world does this even matter? Why are we bringing this up? Well, the issues come in when you're trying to read and write different file systems from different operating systems. Let me give you an example. The Windows operating system by default uh, cannot read or write ext for file systems. So if you're trying to access, let's say you're on a Windows partition and you want to access your Linux data uh, and your data stored in the ext4 file system, you cannot do this. And you could try using a third-party software to achieve this, but it's been my experience that this isn't necessarily ideal. Linux, on the other hand, uh, is quite the opposite. The nice thing about Linux is it is uh, it can access, read, write, uh, and support many, many different file systems. So, uh, for example, if you're on a Linux partition or using the Linux operating system, and you want to get to your Windows operating system data, because uh, that's where it happens to be stored on the NTFS partition. The nice thing with Linux is that you can actually access uh, this data and you can also read and write to it. All right, so I just brought up the wiki here. And if you go to uh, the wiki and do comparison of file systems, uh, you can just do the URL up top. Um, they have this awesome little chart here and you can go through it. Uh, I'm going to go over some uh, very vague uh, uh, pros and cons to some of the file systems, but obviously I can't cover them all. I mean, this is a list of all the file systems and all the features. So now I'm going to give you some pros and cons of file systems. So let's start out with FAT32. This is actually what most USB sticks are formatted as. And what's nice about the FAT32 file system is that it's pretty much universal, the standard, as far as reading and writing uh, with all the different operating systems. So what this means is that uh, Mac OS X can read write to it, uh, Linux can easily read write to it, and Windows can read write to it. And honestly, this is probably why many USB manufacturers just default to this file system. 
The major downside that I see of this file system is that you cannot have a file, a single file, larger than uh, 4 gigabytes. So what this means if you have an HD video that is 6 gigabytes in file size, you won't be able to save it in the FAT32 file system. Next up is the ext4 file system. Now this is the default for the most part uh, file system for most Linux distributions and the nice thing about this file system is that the way it stores its data is that very little defragging is ever really required uh, so what's really nice is that over time as long as you don't go past I think it's like 80 percent of your hard drive capacity uh, for this file system then for the most part defragging becomes a thing of the past the other advantage to the ext4 file system or at least in Linux is that I found I have had excellent read write speeds uh, everything seems very very fast when compared to me reading reading and writing uh, data files in an NTFS environment the major disadvantage to an ext4 file system under a dual boot environment is the fact that Windows operating system cannot read or write to an ext4 file system I have tried a third-party uh, software as I've alluded to in the beginning of this video and the issue is is it doesn't really write back to it I can only read to it or at least the software I was using uh, I'm not sure if you could buy software but in all honesty uh, I just don't want to deal with that Next up is the NTFS file system. Uh, this happens to be the default file system for the Windows operating system. And uh, under the Windows operating system, this is a very decent uh, file system. The major advantage to this file system under a dual boot uh, setup is that uh, not only can Windows read and write to this, but also Linux can read and write to this. So uh, that's really, really nice uh, if you want to set up a separate data partition that has only your data. Uh, this could be accessed by both Windows and Linux depending on which uh, environment you're actually booted into. So the major disadvantage for the NTFS file system uh, under a Linux uh, environment is the fact that there is a lot more overhead for the Linux environment. Uh, there's, there's a program or, or, or an application used in the background. I think it used to be like 3G Fuser, some, something like this. I can't remember off the top of my head. But uh, essentially what ends up happening is you have a lot more overhead. Uh, I mean, you can read right to NTFS, but you're not going to get as fast of speeds when compared to using the native file system ext4. So that's possibly a major consideration consideration if you're in the Linux operating system a lot more than the Windows operating system uh, you may want to really consider using ext4 over NTFS uh, just to gain those uh, speed increases hopefully next week this will make a lot more sense to you once we uh, discuss partitioning but uh, once you partition, you're going to have to figure out which file system you're going to want to use. Uh, this is why I created this video. And one of the things that I'm a big fan of, no matter which way or whatever file system you use, uh, I'm a huge fan of having uh, your Linux operating system on one partition, your Windows operating system on the other partition, and then your data on a third partition. That way, if you have to reinstall Windows or Linux, in theory, your data will be completely safe. So under a dual boot environment, which partition do I recommend for your data? Well, that's the million dollar question. I can't give you a complete answer because it varies depending on the situation, but I can give you some scenarios. Personally, I would rule out FAT32 right off the bat. Um, uh, the 4 gig file limit size isn't that good and is not as efficient uh, as storing data compared to the other file systems. If you're planning on using Windows operating system a lot more than the Linux operating system, or you're maybe are thinking about spending 50% of your time uh, in each, then I would probably recommend using an NTFS file system for your data. Uh, you will have a little bit more overhead when in the Linux operating system, but I think that that trade-off is worth it. Uh, in fact, um, I don't do that now, but I have done that for a very, very long time, and I have uh, run into no issues doing that. I will give you a quick warning though, uh, I was reading on uh, one of the wikis when I was uh, getting this prepared, and it seems like there is a hibernation bug in the Windows operating system. So basically what happens is if you're in the Linux operating system and you read and write to this uh, NTFS data uh, partition, and then you jump into Windows and then you go into hibernation mode, the way it's set up is that Windows may not recognize that you added new files and your files may get deleted. Now, now, I personally haven't run across this, um, but if you are concerned about this, 
uh, then definitely uh, consider not uh, enabling hibernation mode on your Windows operating system. If you are gung-ho about the Linux operating system and you plan on being in it maybe 80 to 90 percent or even more uh, of the time compared to Windows operating system, then I would strongly consider ext4 just for the simple fact that you gain a lot with the ext4 file system uh, such as read write speeds, uh, less overhead, and possibly a better overall experience just because that is how Linux is designed. Linux is designed to work very well with ext4, I and mean, it does work very well with NTFS, but ext4 is kind of the native file system for Linux, so uh, that is a huge bonus when compared to the NTFS file system. In the future, uh, if you feel adventurous, feel free to check out ButterFS or maybe ZFS. Uh, again, these file systems have different pros and cons, uh, depending on what you're looking to do with your data and how to store it. But uh, you know, for new users, I would probably just recommend stick with the ext4 or NTFS and uh, you should have hopefully no issues. So next week I will dive into partitioning, what it means, uh, some things to consider under partitioning. And during the partitioning process, you will of course have to pick a file system. So that's why I did this video so you can maybe possibly think about how you want to use Linux uh, and set up your dual boot environment and then maybe consider which file system you would like to store your data on. As always, thanks for watching and be sure to check out my website greenhornlinux.com thanks for watching